Hmm. This is a tape from Barbara. She said it's my new apartment. Yeah, well, we'll see what it looks like. Is this thing on? Guess it is. Hey, TC, here's my apartment. I think I need some help here. Oh, I'm glad you moved out of that rat hole you were living in. Hey, I moved the stereo. It took six guys to move the stereo up here. Got a lot of windows here. No curtains. She's such an exhibitionist. I love the futon because it's my guest room. There's my <laughs> chair. Hey, I got a fireplace. Did I tell you that? Uh, yeah, but it's this wood. I, I hate this wood, but the landlord won't let me paint it. Yeah, we can definitely do something else with that fireplace. That's nice. Oh, yeah, my fish are here. You like the fish. Oh, what I is that? tolerate let your see fish. Let me get this light on. Hey, there's the fish. Yeah, yeah. It's my dining room. More windows. I don't know what to do with these windows. Lots of walls. Oh, yeah, and these chairs. Look, our Margaret gave me her chair set. And she's supposed to give them to me. I think we should do something with that. Oh, and I got this foyer. I don't know, it's got this leather padding stuff up against the wall. Look, White it won't even leather? fall off. I don't know what to do about this. It's got this funky gold here. Very 60s. So that's it. It's my apartment. Help! Yeah, we can definitely do something with this apartment. Hmm. Call a few people, do a little bit of shopping. Shave. <laughs> All right, baby, it's on. Designer man to the rescue! Just came from Home Depot, right? And I figured on the way while we're driving home, I would, you know, let you know what we got. So we picked up a level. Now a lot of people don't use these things, but these things help you keep from hanging a picture like that. Makes you hang it straight. The little bubble in the middle tells you if it's level or not. Okay, we got um, a hammer and uh, we got some paint stirs. You don't have to buy those. They'll give you those for free sometimes, and maybe you have to ask for them. Excuse me. Woo. Um, what else? Oh, you got to get an assortment of nails and fasteners, like nails and, and some tacks and, you know, some push pins, stuff like that. Pick up a staple gun, make sure you get a couple of different size staples. Um, get you a glue gun with some glue sticks. Make sure the glue sticks are the right size for the, for the glue gun. Oh, wait, for the glue gun, okay, because if they don't, they won't fit. They won't work right. When you're running around like this, make sure you get breakfast. Get something to eat, too, because uh, you may not have time once you get started. Oh, excuse me. <gasps> And don't drive too fast. Okay. Hey, hey. Hey, how you doing? How'd you get here before me? <laughs> Where's everybody? You know where the crew is? Uh, I must be on break. Oh, but see, see, they've been working, though. They've been working. Look what a little paint can do. Now, remember, this was all gold before. And we painted this black. We masked the squares and just painted it black. About a quarter paint. Nothing, but it brings it a much more up-to-date look, less retro, less 60s. The other thing we did in the foyer was to bring the aquarium that was in an awkward place in the living room and put it in the um, foyer for a nice focal point. When people walk in, they get to see the fish and see I can do this, and the fish jump, and I can traumatize them, and it's okay because I go home, they stay here. Uh-huh. <laughs> Come on. Um, dining room is looking real nice. We chose a real nice warm color for the dining room, and we put it on using a sponge technique. Very easy easy, very forgiving technique. We're going to show you how to do that later on. We use the same technique here in the living room. Now, um, you should have a plan. If you have a computer, it makes it real easy. If not, just write it down. Um, but we use the same sponge technique here in the living room, just a lighter color, and the paint has a sheen to it. It gives it a whole different feel here. But remember, when you're painting, I don't care what you're painting, make sure you cover all of your things with a drop cloth. It could be plastic or uh, fabric here, but you have to cover them with something because paint splatters and it's very unforgiving. And I don't care how good you are, you're never that good. Moving on, yeah. Um, this is the entertainment unit that was over on the other side of the room. We decided to put it over here because it fits in this niche so much better and it's a nicer place to sit and watch TV. You can watch the fireplace too. The problem was though that the wood on this was different from the wood on the fireplace, so it didn't match. But we're going to cover this with something because we can't paint it, we can't sand it because what? We don't own this. So we're going to cover it with something and it'll be a nicer look here. But at this point, 
I really can't do anything because there's nobody here, right? So um, if you hang out for a minute, I'll be right back. You're gonna stay, right? You're not going nowhere, are you? All right. All right, so my crew is back and we are working on window treatments. Now, most people spend a lot of money on window treatments. It's really not that deep. These right here, these are coat hooks. Coat hooks cost, what, $1.19 a pair at the hardware store? This is a wooden doll you can get cut to, cut to length at the hardware store. It costs about $10 for 10 feet, something like that. And what you do, you make sure the size is right so it can slip right in between there. And there's your curtain rod. Boom. Take you five, 10 minutes to put up. We're going to use sheets for curtains. Um, most sheets have a really nice wide bottom hem. See that? Ooh. That we're going to use is, um, that's what we're going to use to thread the dowel through. Let me see that. We're threading the dowel through the sheets there. And we just take it and we take this one down. Oh, like that. And you put this one up. Slips right in, up, usually. There you go. Slips right in. You spread the sheets out. The great thing about these is that you know they're machine washable. They'll come out crisp and fresh every time. There are no iron sheets. And that's it. The wrinkles will come out on their own if you allow them to. If you feel like ironing, you know, you can get to it. But me, I'm not having that later. All right, so now remember earlier when we were talking about this wall and I told you it was sponge painting? I'm going to show you how to do that. First, you need to get a sea sponge, right? Don't get a regular sponge because it um, doesn't have enough variation in it. A sea sponge has all these nice little things. You get a lot of nice, good pattern. First thing you do, un rubber gloves because you don't want your fingers to look like that, right? Especially you ladies. I know you spend all that money on the manicure and whatnot. All right, so you put the sponge in the water and you squeeze out almost all the water. The more water you have, the more translucent the paint will look on the wall, but the more likely you are to get drips. So squeeze out, you know, pretty much all the water. And you take a little bit of paint. You don't need a whole lot. Just a little bit, that's not a lot, right? And then you smoosh. And you smoosh it on until you kind of looks like what you want it to look like. Make sure you put your painter's tape down, ladies and gentlemen. It saves you a lot of time and effort in the end cleaning up your moldings and stuff, all right? And you smoosh it, and you look at it, see how it looks, and eh. you smoosh a little bit more, and you add a little more paint, and you keep smooshing until you finish the whole wall and it looks you get the effect that you want. That's it. Case closed. Your little brother could do it. You know, your grandmother could do it. Come on. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do on this wall, we're going to put some wallpaper borders on. Thank you. Okay, now usually you go and buy your wallpaper borders, right? They come in a roll, strippable, all that kind of stuff, but they're kind of expensive. What I decided to do was make my own by taking my designs to Kinko's. I give her these. <laughs> And she gives me these. I took my designs to Kinko's and I had them printed on cardstock, all right? Um, I suggest you have yours printed on regular bond paper and that way you can see if they work first before you spend the extra money and have them printed on a good cardstock. Okay, so we put them up here and see what they look like. Now we're gonna attach these with a staple gun because remember, we're trying to do things that you can take with you when you go, all right? So your landlord won't be like, why'd you put all that stuff on my wall and I can't, uh, uh, you know, you don't want to be bothered all that. So, and I can tell you right now, just by looking at these, that they're gonna be too big. So I wish I had followed my own advice and had them printed on regular paper because now I gotta go back to Kinko's and have these things reduced. And I think I'm gonna have the um, paper changed. See, See this white, it's a little bit too bright up next to this antique white. So I'm gonna have them take the paper down to like maybe a beige color and have them reduce them to about four by four, all right? And I think that's gonna be fine. Like I said, they go up with a staple gun. Boom, 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 boom. Very easy, very simple. And that's about it. All right, now this is the same technique we used in the dining room, in the living room, but we used a lighter color and we used two colors, a white and this tan color. And uh, we sponged the white on top of the tan just a little bit to give it more, more depth. We also used uh, um, semi-gloss paint, which gives the whole room a nice glow to it. Now, we're going to run to Home Depot so you can understand why we use the semi-gloss paint. Hey, yo, 
We're here at Home Depot, and my buddy Pete, he's gonna help us mix some paint, okay? So come here, Pete. Yeah. Um, now, I have plaster walls, right? Mm -hmm. What should I do before I paint? Definitely use a primer sealer. Why? For stain killer, mm -hmm. and also gonna guarantee the adhesion. Oh, okay, now, flat paint, semi-gloss, satin, what is that? Well, flat paint's usually used for your walls, mm -hmm. okay? They hide imperfections. Okay. All right, semi-gloss is very shiny, but great scrubbability, which is uh -huh. bathroom or kitchens. Okay. And then the satin's in between. Has a scrubbability, but not so shiny. Oh, cool, okay. Check this out. Um, this is the color I want, what is it? Uh, persimmon berry, woohoo. Okay. So how do you do that? Basically, I just put this in the computer, uh -huh. print it up, and it tells me what to mix. Oh, okay, and it prints the, oh, prints the label. Oh, come on, keep going. Keep going. There we go. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right, it's got a lot of numbers on there. What is right. it? The, the colorants. Actually, what I do is I get the base. Mm hmm. And that's our, that's our satin base. Absolutely. Mm hmm. Oh. And what do you do? You just stir that or you shake it up? What, what actually, do you do? I put it in the mixer. Oh, you, oh, you put it in here? Right. Okay. Uh huh. All oh, right, so we'll be back in a minute. Oh, oh hey, hey, what's happening? <laughs> Just taking a little nap. Okay, look, so we're gonna cover this futon couch. And as you may know, futon covers are very expensive, $100, $150. So what we decided to do was use two sheets the same size as the futon. These are two tw uh, queen size fitted sheets. And what we did was we secured the bottom sheet on the back of the futon with safety pins. You want to pull it tight and make sure it's real smooth there. And oh, that's something else you should have in your kit is a nice assortment of safety pins. Yeah, all right. Okay, so with the help of my trusty assistant, trusty assistant, I am calling you. We're going to put this other sheet on the top there. Is that right? Oh, that's not right. <laughs> it's still not right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, pull on over. Make sure it's tight all the way around. And that's it. If you want, you can secure the back with another safety pin just to keep it from pulling. If you can see the safety pin, put a little tassel there. Nobody will know they think it's a nice little decorative thing. They'll go, ooh, wow, that's nice. Okay, moving on. Um, same thing with this futon chair. It's a little bit different action, okay? And um, it takes a little time. So what we're going to do, we're going to speed this up for you. All right? Are you ready? That's it. Hello. Remember when we were talking about the fireplace earlier, I told you we're going to do something about it, right? Well, this is muslin. Muslin is very cheap material, like $1.19 a yard. And what we're doing is we're stapling this to the face of the fireplace. Now, one thing you need to remember is that you cannot do this if your fireplace is working. Right? Why? Because this will catch on fire. Hence the name fireplace. Okay, uh, so we pulled it down, we stapled it at the top, and then we pleated it and stapled it down here at the bottom, pulling it tight so you get these nice little ridges there. Not too tight where you stretch it too much. We stapled it all the way around the edge here. And then we took a little knife, a little mat knife, and you cut right along the molding there. Boom. We're going to cut that all the way down and around the bottom here. Um, then we're going to take some glue from a glue gun and put it on the muslin, not on the wood, and glue a piece of rope right here so it hides all these staples and gives a nice finished edge right around this. And we're going to do it around the top and around the bottom too, and then it'll be done. Paint the inside of here, maybe black. Yeah, paint the inside of there black and throw some candles in there. Boom. You got a wonderful fireplace that is working and not working at the same time. It's kind of like a double entendre kind of thing. Oh, excuse me. 
<laughs> nice to have helpers. All right, we're going to do some upholstery, right? People think upholstery is really hard. It really isn't if you break it down, okay? A chair has three basic parts. You have a frame, you have a seat, and you have a back. Seat and back are usually held on by uh, four screws, one, two, three, four. And as you can see, when you take it off, it's nothing but a piece of wood with some foam and some fabric over it. And as you can see with this piece, they've already done some reupholstery, which is just what we're going to do. We're going to wrap the fabric around and staple it on. The fabric we're going to use, though, is mud cloth. Mud cloth is from a small country in Africa called Mali. Yes, and they make this there, and they do a lot of different colors. Anyway, um, but the problem with this fabric is that it's really stretchy, and, and if you put it on the seat, when people slide on and off, they're going to eventually tear it, and it's not going to last long. So what we did was go to the fabric store and get a piece of fusible interfacing, kind of stiff. Um, we iron this on. That way you don't have to sew anything. You just iron it on, and what it does, it stabilizes this fabric so it doesn't pull and stretch so much, and people won't tear it up when they sit on it, because you want something durable, right, or you wouldn't put it on a chair. So we're going to center that on there like that flip the chair over now when you staple make sure that you staple in the center of each side first pulling tight to the following side boom like that you want to staple better than I did that's I'm trying to do this quick right you pull on the side over here staple there pull the side over here do the same thing right and then you go back and you straighten it out and you staple all the way across boom Boom, boom, boom. Make sure you do op opposite sides. Don't do around the corner like this because it might wind up lopsided. Okay? And you do it like that. Boom. And the finished chair looks like this. Voila. Mm. So we're in the dining room. We pretty much are done with the walls. Now we're going to start on the window treatment. Now, most people have either mini blinds or their predecessor Venetian blinds already up. Now, just so you know, Venetian blinds have nothing to do with Venice or Venetians. It's just like French fries have nothing to do with France or French. I don't know. Whatever. But what we're going to hang here, we're going to put um, some bamboo shades within here. Now, you can ha hang bamboo shades either outside the window or inside the window. We chose to hang them inside the window because they did all this work painting these moldings and it looks real nice, so we didn't want to lose that, right? So it comes with two little hooks. You put the hooks right there like that. Hand me that. Thank you. And then you hook that on there and you hook this part on there and you let it roll down and they never roll down right. But you know, they always roll up fine so you'll be fine. And that's all there is to it. Boom. And this is what you call curly willow. You can get it at the florist. So it'll dry a nice brown, right? You tie it in the middle, put a loop around this end, a loop around that end, and we're going to secure it at the top of the window with the same kind of hooks we use to put up the shade. And so you just hook that on there, and you hook this loop around there, and then you take about five yards of fabric, whatever you want, and just wrap around the willow and let it hang on the end. And that's it. Okay, so our plants are here. Time to put them in place. Remember, when you buy new plants, quarantine them for at least a week. That way, if they have any diseases or bugs, they won't be transferred to the plants you already have at home. So, we are finished. What do you think? I think it looks pretty good. The walls came out really nice. Compliments the mud cloth. We found this bench at the Salvation Army. Covered in a mud cloth, tied at the legs. Really inexpensive. Inexpensive particle board table with a mud cloth cover on top really nice and check out the aquarium came out really nice with the foliage underneath it ties right in got a bowl of potpourri down there greet your guests with wonderful smells come on let's go into the living room all right so we're in the living room now you see these two pictures now most people wouldn't have hung both these pictures on one wall but one just wasn't enough so we hung them both and they make a really nice statement and with the wall pattern they really pop out but check it out check it out the fireplace planner, what a concept, we put plants in it, ah, <laughs> they really look nice doubled here up under the mirror, it's really great. And over here is where the aquarium used to be, but we decided to put our collection of sculpture here, people can walk up and really look at the detail, really nice. The boutique that was in the dining room looks fantastic, doubled in the mirror right here. I'm telling you, it looks great. This is the chair that we covered earlier, put a little piece of raffia here, and this pillow right here, covered with a pillowcase, tied on the ends with some more raffia. <laughs> Easy. All right, the fireplace. We pleated the muslin, stapled it on, 
took a glue gun and glued this jute rope right around the edge here and around the top and hung this wonderful piece of sculpture. It looks great. Down here in the fireplace, because it is not a working fireplace, we decided to put a mirror and we put these candles here. Now, I know I said be careful with fire and the muslin, but because these candles are so low and they're in glass containers, you don't have to worry about anything getting burned. Right? Okay. The entertainment unit that was over there works well here. It really does. People can watch TV and nobody walks in front of them. We put some plants, some more candles. Candles add instant ambiance. Remember that. Looks fantastic. The couch. Aha. The couch we covered with a couple of sheets. There's that pillowcase again. Put our pillows on top. Looks fantastic. All right. In the window, we've got this glass here. In the morning, when the sun comes through here, this colored glass is just going to pop. Oh, it's going to look fantastic. I'm telling you, I wish I lived here. All right, this is her collection of baskets. I took them and I put them on the wall and put a frame around them because I really wanted them to be seen. Now you have a piece of sculpture that's a picture, too. Whew, talk to me. Come on. All right, we are into the dining room. Oh, curtain separating the living room and the dining room. Wonderful touch, but come on, come on, check it out. This room, this terracotta sponge dawn looks wonderful. I'm telling you, it really works. And the window treatment came out really nice. Just enough to pop these windows out. The bamboo shades will allow a lot of light in in the morning time. And check this out. This is nothing but a piece of foam wrapped in mud cloth. You can sit here in the wintertime, make it nice and warm when you come in. Our chairs came out wonderful. Each chair has a different pattern on it, and they all work well with this table. And over here, this credenza used to be on that wall. We put it on this wall to provide a nice focal point. So when you walk in this room, you see the table setting, and you see this nice credenza with the plants, and this wonderful piece of sculpture from Benin, West Africa, right over it, and pops everything right out. With the candle holders, it really makes it nice. This piece right here is a Madonna from Jamaica. It was just sitting on the wall, it looked kind of lost. But what we did, we took another piece of wood in the, in the form of a frame, put it around it, and it made that whole picture pop right out. But my find of the week is this plant stand right here in the corner. Wasn't a plant stand, it used to be a lamp, had a light, everything, took it out, now it holds a plant, $15 at the Goodwill. I'm telling you, check out the border. Smaller is better sometimes, okay? It really works well. Uh, ooh, a vibrating pager, <laughs> you should get one. <laughs> Ooh, 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 I forgot my mother's coming for dinner. Look, I gotta go. I'll see y'all later. Woo. Okay, so my mother's coming by for dinner, right? I just stopped by the store to pick up a few things for a nice shrimp salad. So we're gonna get, we have flowers here, right? Got some, uh, some green onions, some parsley, some romaine lettuce, some Italian dressing, a cucumber, a tomato, it's another tomato, got some lemons, got some avocados, and some crackers. Is that it? That's it. Okay. First thing you have to do, you have to wash all this stuff. Whew. Okay, that's done. Now what you need to do, you need to cut all that stuff up, but you need to clean your counter off first. Clean. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so now you're ready to fix the shrimp. Really, really easy. Got about a pound, pound and a half of already cooked shrimp. Aren't they pretty? Yeah, just dump them in the bowl. Uh, untie the bag first, then you dump them in the bowl. Okay, to that, you're gonna add some Italian dressing. Okay, do that. Some of your parsley, uh -huh. some onions, like that, and a little bit of garlic. This is garlic, uh -huh. okay. Uh -huh. uh, pepper, uh -huh. go a little bit in there, like that, okay. Uh -huh. And what else? What else? Oh, some um, paprika for color. <laughs> for color, ah. Okay, yeah, like that, and then you smush. See, smushing works for a lot of things. You can smush when you cook. And you can smush when you paint. Okay, oh, look at that, isn't it pretty? Look at that, that's so pretty. Now I'm gonna put this salad together. Check it out. Okay, so now all you have to do is add the shrimp.
Okay, what most men don't understand about cooking for someone is that it's not really about the food so much, it's about presentation. So check it out. And the last touch is a bunch of flowers. Now, most people take flowers like this and they put them in a real tall vase and all of that, right? Nah, I don't wanna put them in a tall vase. So what I'm gonna do is clear off a little space here and I'm gonna chop them down. Gone, see? Get a vase, where's my vase? There's gotta be a vase down here somewhere. There we go. Put a little water. Boom, boom. There. Look at that. Look at that. That's it. Dinner. For mom, it's nice and light because she's watching her weight and so am I. Kind of clean this up and maybe I'll have enough time to get rid of this garbage before she gets here. And then again, maybe not. <laughs> okay, look, I gotta go. I hope y'all had a good time. I did. And, um, ooh, peace. Hold up, mom. You cannot do this if your fireplace is working. They go up with a staple gun. Boom, 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 boom. And the finished chair looks like this. Case closed. Your little brother could do it. Oh, oh right. But your grandmother could do it. And then your schmooze. Oh, oh, right. We got some paint stirs. You don't have to buy those. They'll give you those for free sometimes. I give her these. So our plants are here. Then your schmooze. Look at that. That's so pretty. Get something to eat too, because uh, you may not have time once you get started.